of the Canada Sales Congress Industry Panel. I'm Matt Bell. Alongside me is our is Donna Glasgow, the editor in chief of the Insurance and Investment Journal, and we will be chairing the discussion today. Like from a regulatory perspective, when you start looking at the fair treatment of consumers, how that's becoming more and more the language of the regulator, which makes a lot of sense. And I think we're going to see change, but it'll be positive change where everybody in the industry will be working towards making sure the consumer is treated fairly. And I think that's really important as we go forward. Um, some of the things I touch upon when you're dealing with that is, um, you know, one of the things we did was our BPR, which means treating customer, making sure the client gets the right product based on the asset that they have with the company versus, uh, you know, a high MER. If they qualify for high net worth, well, that's where the money should be. It's what's right for the consumer is the most important thing. You start looking at some of the things around sales conferences and you know where they're incentive-based conferences and the change that's going there. And we'll likely talk about that a little later. You know, service commissions and how they follow the consumer. If you want to give the right service for the consumer, where should the trailer commission be paid? So those are some of the things that we have to look at. How you target consumers, as we heard this morning in the, in the earlier uh, speakers, where how you target consumers in the world of digitalization and how that's changing and the impact to the industry. So I think those are a lot of different uh, aspects that are impacting the insurance industry. Industry. Thank you. That is when you start looking at how consumers will buy five years from now, we know they're, they're not all going to be buying the same way as they do today. And they'll leverage off the experiences they have in other products that they're buying. Now the insurance world is a little bit different, but at the same time I think we got to be aware that we don't know what we don't know yet. And what the future will look like, whoever enters into our marketplace, if Google Finance decides to come into our marketplace, what's that going to look like? When you start thinking of, you know, Uber, five years ago, none of us would have been able to spell Uber, never mind know what it is. They own no taxis. They don't own anything. And yet, they're a very large transportation company. So what's going to happen in our industry? I don't know. I will add, though, as Jim has said, I think the advice channel will remain. It's got its place today. It will have its place tomorrow. Absolutely no doubt. How they work with you know, the digital age will be interesting. How, and as carriers, I think we have a big play here is how do we implement, how do we bring the two together so that the advisors can leverage off the technology? Because there is a market where we're going to have to simplify our product so consumers might want to buy it direct as well. So there's, it, we don't know what we don't know yet. So it's wide open. That the world is going to become more transparent. So as a uh, as an advisor, you're going to have to learn to deal with the consumer because they you got to be transparencies all over, right? And the consumer is probably more informed today than they ever were, which is not a bad thing. It's going to force advisors to be even more knowledgeable about their their business and their products. And as Jim also touched upon earlier about. They're going to be specialists. So how do you train these? How do they become you know, top-notch advisors? So that's one. I think the other one is going to be documentation. And I know we keep talking about compliance, but I think that's a really big one. And if you're doing the right thing for the consumer, and most advisors are, quite honestly, it's documenting your files. It's not just being able to say, here's what I did with my client, here's how I arrived at the need and the, the solution, but documenting so that if anybody ever comes in and says, you know, hey, Phil, how did you come up with that product and that amount? I can tick out a file and say, here's how I arrived at that. So I think that's where it's going to be really important. Uh, but other than that, I think it's, it's a quite, uh, you know, a quite a great career ahead of all for advisors. So it's a good... comments. I think the sales-based conferences, like we've been privileged to be able to host our advisors and MGAs at these events. And it really has been uh, a, a fabulous run here. But the time has come. There is a perception out there that advisors might be selling the wrong thing. We haven't noticed it, but it's a perception. So why put our partners, why put our advisors in a position of perceived conflict of interest? So we made the announcement early this year in February to 
put an end to these incentive-based conferences. And actually, last week was our last one in London, England. And uh, but, but we are not putting an end to meetings and educational. It's going to take a new format. It will take the rest of this year to be able to announce something where we are going to be able to still hold meetings for advisors. It will be more educational, and they'll have to pay their own way to get there. But uh, I, I think it's, it's a good message. The industry is taking the right steps, and I encourage all of the players, if they haven't already done so, to follow our footsteps. Be honest, take care of your clients, put your clients' interests first, and be patient, and you'll be fine in this business.